Thank you, Lorraine. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all here this morning on this bright, shiny day, at least for right now. We're calling for showers later on, but uh, rally day. And don't forget that. Bring whoever you can grab, okay? All right, so rally day is May 21st. As I've told you, we'll have that concert at 10 a.m. from Reunited, a group called Reunited. Then about 10.45, 10.50, we'll have our service for about 45 minutes, and then uh, Michael Benz will be the speaker for that service, and then uh, cover dish lunch in about 11.45. Susie, anything? There you go. There you go. Susie has a sign-up list for that. And I'll bet you have one for Park Avenue too, right? Good, good, good. Okay. All right. So it'll be a combined service with both churches right here. So let's fill the pews that Sunday for Rally Day. We will have Bible study this Wednesday, both in the morning and in the evening. Morning will be studying chapter 5, and in the evening, 9 and 10. Chapters 9 and 10, that'll be their last meeting. Okay, are there any other announcements this morning? Leslie and Christina, Leslie, thank you for your work, all your work, and Christina, thank you for coming and assuming some of that work, so appreciate that, so um, moving forward on that. Let's begin with the prelude. Thank you, Lorraine. If you are able, please rise now for the call to worship. Lord, I trust in you alone. Don't let my enemies defeat me. Rescue me because you are the God who always does what is right. Yes, you are my rock and my fortress. Honor your name by leading me out of this peril. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let's sing all three verses now of His Eye is on the Sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? 
Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my That's all right. Let's just let's just stop there. Let's just stop there. That's okay. His eye is on the sparrow. You may be seated. Okay. And you can stay seated for the opening prayer. You may stay seated. Lorraine, it's perfectly good. Dear Lord and Father of us all, we thank you for this day and life itself. Thank you for all of your blessings this past week. You indeed are so good to us. Be with us this worship hour. Help us to praise and worship you. Help us to hear your voice. And as we receive your body and blood today, help us to always remember the love that you have for us. It's a love so great that you went on to the cross for us. As you blessed us, help us to be a blessing to others. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Now let's sing together the Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Please rise if you are able now.
be seated. We turn now to our scripture reading, and we turn first to 1 Peter, way back in the back, 1 Peter 2, 2 through 10. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy spirit holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And then we go over to the Gospel of John, a rather familiar passage, John 14. John 14, 1 through 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for what anything in my name, and I will do it. So, started out reading this morning, 
that we are a special stone, living stones, the chosen people. You say, Bruce, I thought the chosen ones were the Jewish nation. Yes, that is certainly true. But it says in 1 Peter 2, 9, since we have chosen Jesus as the cornerstone, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. God has called us out of darkness into a wonderful light. And we are truly the people of God receiving his grace and mercy. And that theme goes right on over into John 14 this morning, our gospel reading for the day. As these special living stones, as God's chosen people, we are guaranteed a room in our Father's house. Christ has guaranteed us a room. Some other versions say an abiding place. And we'll be coming back to take us to heaven with him. Jesus is taking us to heaven. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God except through Jesus. And if we know Jesus, we know his Father God. Scripture says Jesus is in the Father and the God the Father is in him. Jesus speaks to us on behalf of the Father. And this is shown by his works. If we believe we too can do the works, the wonderful works that Jesus has done, and Jesus will do whatever we ask in his name to glorify the Father through the Son. And then his last quote in our reading today is, you may ask for anything in my name and I will do it. And that's a fantastic promise. In William Barclay's commentary for this scripture today, he states that when Jesus is telling, what Jesus is telling in this passage in John 14, the disciples do not even realize that in a short time they will be losing Jesus. The world will be falling in, so to speak. But they and we must keep trusting, holding on to our faith. In heaven, for instance, there will be rooms for us, abiding places, mansions, some texts call it. And we will be assigned to these rooms as we have merited. That means believing. Now, I'm going to give you some ideas from some early Christian thinkers, but I want to tell you, I think a little bit of this is out there, but I'm going to tell you what they thought. The early Christian thinkers, like Origen, but believe that when we died, our souls would go to paradise here on earth for training and teaching. And when we were worthy or fit then, after the training and teaching, we would, after that, ascend to the heavens. We would pass through stages until we were sent to our place in heaven, following Jesus to our assigned place. Clement of Alexandria believed that there were degrees of glory based on a person's achievement in holiness in his or her life here on earth. And he believed that we can go on and even develop in glory, develop while we were in heaven. God is helping us toward sanctification even in heaven. It is one form of belief about heaven, both of those beliefs. A simpler belief might be, and this is what I believe, that there's room for all of us in heaven, period. Barclay says, heaven is as wide as the heart of God, and there is room for us all. When Jesus says he goes to prepare a place for us, it is saying that he goes before us, leading us into heaven, just like that shepherd last week. Remember that? Leading the flock. He leads us into heaven. He is the forerunner. And yet in his second coming, he will come again. Jesus has told the disciples many times that he would be leaving, going, but they did not understand. They, they didn't even get it that he would be going by the way of the cross. Thomas not only did not understand, he wanted to make sure he understood 
where Jesus was going. It was the question of the whereabouts where Jesus was going that prompted one of the most profound things Jesus ever said. And that is, well, here's what, first, here's what Thomas said. Master, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And then Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the Jews knew much about the way to or the way of God in their heritage. But now Jesus was coming out there and saying, I am the way. He was also saying that he embodied the truth. He conveyed truth. The Jews had learned much in their heritage about the path of life, but now Jesus was saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And life with Jesus is life indeed. And then Jesus put all this together in one sentence. No one comes to the Father except by me. He alone, he is saying, I am the way to God. And in him alone, we see what God is like. Jesus alone can lead us into God's presence. And then Jesus goes a little further, not just with Thomas, but with Philip. He says to Philip, Philip, you've known me all this time. If you know me, you know me, the, the Father. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The Father dwells in me, Jesus is saying. If you have seen me, you've seen the Father. To see Jesus is to see what God is like. Jesus, sanctified human birth. God was human. God did a man's work. God knew what it was like to be tempted. He knows our struggles, our tensions. He knows the firing line of life. But in Jesus, we see God loving. And in loving, and that's when in pain comes the love. God in man, his son Jesus is headed to Calvary. Some of you might be going through pain right now. Well, in that pain is the love of Christ because he also knew pain. Jesus and the Father are one. However, everything Jesus did, including going to the cross, the ultimate pain, it was all to glorify his Father, our Father. Jesus brought God's accent, his message, God's mind, and God's heart to men. Everything Jesus did was God in action. Since the beginning of time, Jesus was destined to be God incarnate, God on earth. Why? Because we are, again, going back to Peter now, we are chosen. It goes right back in full circle. He was chosen by God, and we can celebrate because he loved us so much. He chose us and went to the cross for us. We are his chosen. And those last strange, really bizarre, last three verses of John 14, we are chosen to do what Jesus did. He who believes in me will do the works I do, and he will do greater works than these. You see, in the days Jesus was flesh on earth, he was limited to the area around Palestine. But when he died and rose again, he was liberated from those limitations of being right there on earth, and his spirit then lives on. How does his spirit live on? in working in us, living in us. Living in us as his chosen, his spirit can work mightily anywhere. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, living in us, God living in us. We are his chosen, and we can do what he did, and even greater things. 
So I say to you in closing, do you know God working in you? You, his chosen this day. Amen. Let us turn now to our hymn of response, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Please rise if you are able. We continue to look at our joys and concerns. I do want to uh, let you know that uh, Vicki Jordan, I'll start off with that this morning. Vicki Jordan did pass away um, Friday night. I'm sorry, Thursday night into Friday. It was about midnight. Um, uh, Dan had gotten down uh, with two others to uh, Wilmington, Delaware to visit Vicki, and uh, she did pass away. Then she just kept getting weaker and weaker and uh, passed away Thursday night into Friday morning. We continue to remember Dwight's home right now, right? He'll have another round coming. Okay, okay. And Wayne, continue to lift him up. Mary Lou's brother, Harold, brother-in-law, Harold, was supposed to come home um, into um, kind of a rehab setting, and uh, uh, he hasn't come home yet. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting my boys mixed up. That's Harold 
Harold is home. He's recovering from appendicitis. Gary should be coming home, we hope, today, okay, to rehab at home then. It's going to be at a rehab hospital. Ho rehab hospital, okay, okay. All right, um, Sam is better. I got a, a text from Chris Four over the week, and uh, he's just got a lot going on in his family right now, he says, but he will be back, he promises. Bernita, you shared with us about your classmate's daughter, Becky, the tumors in the brain. We continue to lift her up. And Ken Sanders, Mike, Mel, you brought that up. Yeah, he, he developed the last couple of days before surgery, so the surgery had to be for the surgeon, but I think the surgery is back. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. We got the last record control, but they don't like it. Okay, okay. We continue to lift Hope up as she proceeds through... Uh, <coughs> both radiation and extended chemo. We pray for Kayla and Ronnie and the Marlene Martin family. Bernia will take you off now, I guess so. She got a cold after her shingles, but she's a little better. Ron, it's good to see you and Louise here today. And Mel, I think this big back boy in the back is yours, isn't he? Yes, okay. All right. I noticed by the red hair it probably was. So, okay. What's that? Dan and Caitlin's visiting as well. We're glad they're here. We're glad they're here. Um, Hope Sister Faith, Guy Peters, still the Everett Spangler family after his passing. Dory's son in law, Jim Smith, but we also pray for Dory as she developed pneumonia. And uh, uh, she is, I talked to her on Wednesday and then uh, uh, early in church, before church started this morning, I called her again and she is improving. So if you get a chance to drop Dory a call or a card, that would be good. The Ukraine, <coughs> Linda Byers, John Myers, um, Syl said I can take Marie Myers off even though she's lost the sight in one eye now. And uh, she'll have cataract surgery on the other. Florence Clausen is in the hospital. We continue to lift up Wilbur and Cheryl. Anything on Cheryl, Mike? I don't know anything. Okay, okay. Um, Mike, we knew that, but we just, okay, all right, okay. Just kidding you, Mike, anyway, anyway. Kidding you, buddy. All right. Christy Rolls, Don Washable. Anything on him, Mary Lou? Uh, he's still waiting for the results of the biopsy. Four months they'll be waiting. Okay. He, he, they, they're giving him treatment in the eye, but he's still waiting for the results. Wow. What stage it is, whether yeah. it's going to affect the other eye or whatever. Okay. No comment on that. So, okay. <laughs> Susie's back and the Stahl family. Are there others this morning to lift up in prayer or joys this morning? Mike. Uh, Bryce King. Bryce King. He's an 
That used to be a minister's name out in Scotland. Yeah, but Rob, Bob, and uh, right. Anyway, okay. Um, my, other. My grandson Luke died had his first year of college. In. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Okay. And Christy's not that old, so dealing with cancer. All right. Others of you this morning. Anything else this morning? Any joys? Good, 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 good. All right. You know, we take that for granted, but uh, that's, that's a good thing. It's always beauty around all the green and everything. It is, it is beautiful. It really is. Leslie, I'm trying to think. Babe had a request this week. Do you remember that one? For her grandson's friends that won't be. Right. For her grandsons, let's let's just pray about that too. Her grandson's friends that lost a baby. Thanks for helping me on that, Leslie. Okay. Babe shared that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask you to meet these needs. Come into each one of these individuals. This little boy, Bryce King, whose world right now has turned upside down. And some of us here right now can relate to that world being turned upside down. Lord, we know through the scriptures that we read today that we are your chosen ones, your chosen stones. We know that you love us. So Lord, we ask you to hear all of these prayer requests today. For these individuals who need your help, their families need your help. Lord, we give you praises for, for things that we just do take for granted. Day in and day out, things are going well for us. Our healths are good. And then something just turns our world upside down. Kind of like when you were leaving the world and Philip and Thomas and the other disciples' world was turned upside down. Father, help us to keep the faith. Keep us strong. And keep us attentive to you speaking to us that we might hear. Lord, we give you praise for all the blessings that you do give us. And now we are asking for your presence and your healing in each one of these situations. We pray all of this in your precious name. Amen. God has heard our prayers. He always does. He doesn't always answer the way we want, but he always answers. We thank him for his blessings, and we thank all of you. It's a joy to have the church fuller this morning than what it normally is, and I, I thank you all for being here today. And we thank you for your blessings in giving to St. John's Church. Please rise now if you are able, and let's sing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings 
pray together. Redeeming God, the gifts we bring to you this day, we dedicate to the work of kingdom building. Even more, we offer ourselves as material for this work. I'm imperfect as we are, we know with Christ as the cornerstone, you can build your vision of mercy, justice, peace, and compassion here in our midst. In Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Let us begin now our holiest of meals, the communion service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, and he still says today, friends, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Drink it, and as often as you drink it, remember what I have done for you. And so, In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Could I ask the ushers to please come forward?
body of Christ given for you. celebrate the love of Christ now by singing our closing hymn, Victory in Jesus. Please rise if you are able.
victory every month when we participate in Holy Communion. It's more than a Super Bowl victory. It's more than victory at the Masters. Or it's even victory greater than the Coca-Cola 600. Friends, this is true victory. He has prepared a place for us in eternity. That's victory. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now and always. Amen. Amen.